Those two themes are so similar. That trumpet theme from Ives' Unanswered Question and that piano theme from Beethoven's Choral Fantasy, the fantasy for piano, chorus, and orchestra, Opus 80. I feel like they both pose questions in a way. They were written exactly a century apart. The Ives was written in 1908, and the Beethoven was written in 1808. I think the Beethoven actually serves as a kind of answer to the Ives that was posed a century later. Ives said that this was the perennial question of existence. This is what the trumpet melody was supposed to symbolize. And you hear all these different elements in the Ives. There's a trumpet posing that question, and then there is the strings playing these very simple block chords, symbolizing the churning of the earth and the inexorable passage of time. And then there's these four flutes off to the side that the audience doesn't even see, but uh, represent the echoes of the trumpet and, and all these biological life forms trying to make sense of this question and their own role in this pageant. And the Beethoven also has different elements. There's the piano all by itself at first. I mean, when you first hear it, you think it's just a solo piano piece so for a full three minutes. And then the orchestra comes in, it just sort of sneaks in. But you don't even know if it's a full orchestra because it's just little sections here and there. And there's a flute solo and a woodwind trio and a string quartet. And it only gradually sneaks in and takes over. And then you hear this wonderful triumphant theme that actually sounds a lot like the Ninth Symphony. And, but then the piano comes back in and becomes a dialogue between the solo piano and the orchestra. And like the last movement of the Ninth Symphony, it goes through a whole panoply of different moods and, and changes, and then uh, arrives at an apotheosis where the singers come in and sing about the glories of music. And so the piece becomes a celebration of its own art form. And I, I think, in a way, both of these pieces really are about what is music's relationship to us? Why do we need music? What is it that we are searching for? I also think it's very interesting to have these two works performed by a community orchestra, a group of non-professional musicians. When professional orchestras are going belly up all over the place and, uh, and arts funding is a constant worry, the idea that music could be an activity rather than a commodity and create a metaphor for a community by all playing beautifully together, I think that's demonstrated in this concert uh, that you're about to hear. Ives was a great believer in amateur musician, but he conducted a church choir and he always wanted people with less skill to be in his choir. He wanted that whiff of humanity. And you definitely get that whiff of humanity in this performance. Uh, there's uh, flutes playing oboe parts and there's some ragged intonation and not enough violins, but I think what you do hear is the energy and love of lots of people coming together. And it also helped in this performance to have the wonderful, amazing playing of Beth Levin, uh, who is a professional. And she graciously agreed to play with us. And, and just having her infectious energy just raised the bar for everyone and created a, a really unforgettable experience. So when you listen to this performance, you're not going to hear some notes that are in the score and uh, you're going to hear some less than perfect intonation, but you're also going to hear the infectious joy of this Brooklyn community coming together and performing this great music. Thank you. 